Hello, I'm Craig Bradley, the Executive Director of AO Lab, and we recently went through a process uh, that was put on by a faith community that wanted to bring strangers together to work on tech projects. And these people had the shared faith of Christianity, but not much else. And, and the goal was how can we take people and scaffold them from wherever they are to being productive and then solving life issues and creating solutions together for the cause of Christ. And the method, I will say frankly up front, I didn't care for. But the heart behind the method and the intent behind the organization is beautiful and amazing. And I, I'm so grateful for the experience and for the people who put this experience on because it was a tremendous sacrifice of their time and commitment to then make all this possible. Uh, so I just want to say up front, I love the people behind this process, but this is a common approach that I think has challenges for organizations like our own with AO Lab. We're a nonprofit trying to do things that, for the most part, people haven't attempted to do before, at least not in our context and with our setting. And so this method doesn't work well um, for our purposes. It could work well for others. Let me walk through it. So it was very similar to the Agile method, or at least has some shared characteristics. Uh, step one was to have a group conversation. There was uh, a lot of talking about, hey, here's the approach we're going to go through. Uh, some of that time probably could have been cut short to allow people to actually just start working together. Because uh, a, a lot of the time I was waiting, like, when can we start fleshing this out, but uh, grateful for the people who put that effort into it again and not trying to come down hard on anyone because I know I'm as flawed as anyone else. Uh, but moving ahead, they after the group discussion portion, encouraged everyone to get into how might we and how might Jesus statements to then gather ideas and then make sure those ideas are in alignment with the Christian faith. Uh, and then moving forward into mass ideation, the process was to get sticky notes and then make ideas, so like idea two or three, and, and then have everyone grab these voting dots and then create kind of a heat map of what ideas people thought were best to work on. Having then narrowed down um, a broad range of ideas into the most popular, the next step is then to put them on a discernment matrix and say, you know, what's the commitment to time and relationship to make this happen? And then step seven, having done that, who's going to be assigned key actions and who's going to take on those tasks. Um, and again, this is a common process, and it's similar to the Agile method in that there's a lot of planning, a lot of designing, and then you actually start developing and testing and then run this loop uh, typically on a weekly or a biweekly basis depending upon what method that you're using. There is a major flaw with this approach if you are doing something that hasn't been done before or if you are doing something that no one in your group has done before, because in both cases it could apply. Uh, basically, if you're, if you're working with imperfect information at all, uh, and that is that the most important metric in the success of any new endeavor, uh, it could be five things, and a lot of studies have been done on this, and I believe it, and, and so it could be the funding, if I can spell that right, it could be the team, uh, it could be, you know, the idea, it could be the uh, timing of the idea, and then, of course, it could also be the business model. And so any, any new initiative that you're beginning, you know, these five factors um, are some of the most important, but there's been a lot of studies that show that, and this was a surprise to me, so if this is a surprise to you, I, I would be in the same boat. The timing of, an ish of something matters far more than literally anything else. None of these things matter in comparison to the timing of a task. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you think back to the pandemic, if you were making masks at the start of COVID, you were doing great. Uh, and that is just one example of how the timing of an endeavor matters more than anything. And that can be true inside of an organization. Is this the right time for this team to be devoted to this task? Or it could be true, obviously, of course, with product market fit or trying to bring some sort of new anything into the world. The timing matters more than anything. The problem with this approach is that, and many approaches like this, I'm not knocking this approach specifically. This is a common approach in general. The problem is that we, are, we assume that our timing is good. And then, which is bad assumption number one, and then, so number one, we assume the timing is good. And then over here, we assume 
the ideas are good. And both of these are bad assumptions, um, especially if you're working in, in technology where you're trying to do something new. Um, in most cases, whatever you think is easy is probably super hard, and whatever you think is super hard is actually probably pretty easy. I'm overgeneralizing, but that is often the case. And so uh, it is important to realize that we need to approach this with a great deal of humility and not assume that we know what we're doing. Uh, in our case at AO Lab, we're working on new projects and new initiatives that no one has ever attempted before, least of all, not us. And so this project that requires a great deal of planning up front, uh, this process that requires planning up front simply isn't possible. So the method that we've found to be effective that I wanted to share that might be helpful for other organizations, perhaps in a similar situation, is first to uh, frame everything within uh, boundaries of shared goals and alignments. And so this, this exercise here, how might we and how might Jesus, is designed to make sure that you're getting a group into alignment with each other and then with God, which is wonderful. Uh, and then, assuming that you're in uh, you know, alignment here, then the next step is really just to gather uh, whatever information you can to determine, is it the right timing? So if you get a group of people and you say that, you're, hey, we're in enough alignment that we could hypothetically work together, next, is it the right time to work together? Now, as the executive director of the nonprofit that I'm a part of, um, it's my job to make sure that the, task we're, the tasks we're working on are happening at the right time and I'll show you how I do that later. But then, um, but to come to the understanding of whether something is the right time or is not the right time is a very nuanced skill set that requires a big picture view of as much information as you can gather to then inform that decision. And you're going to have to correct that assumption over time, no matter what you're doing, because we're all working from imperfect information. So let's assume that we have the alignment and the timing correct. The next thing to do is to then take the ideas here and then disqualify ideas based upon what is or is not technically feasible. Because we shouldn't assume all these ideas are actually good. We have to have someone who is technically capable to be able to understand, hey, these ideas just will or won't work based upon whatever information we know. And then from the ideas that are still left that aren't disqualified, um, we then need to just, assuming the timing is right, just start trying. So the discernment rate uh, matrix and the key people in actions, these things, again, assume that you know the idea is good and then assume that the idea is feasible and assumes that you know all the challenges that idea is going to have before you begin. Realistically, that's not the case. In most situations when we're doing something new, what the real challenges are won't surface until we begin the, attacking the problem. And so the best solution in our case is just to do it. <laughs> you just start. And so what we'll have a developer just start working on an issue. And specifically, uh, we have a developer do a, I like to call it an LVP. You know, people talk about MVP, most valuable or minimum viable product. Uh, we like to think about an LVP as the least viable product or the least viable prototype. Make the worst version possible of the thing you're talking about that is still the thing so that we can get our collective brains around the scope of the problem and then iterate and improve from there. That is a method we found to be very effective wherever possible. So how it actually works is a developer will begin, they will just start doing the thing, and then once they've done maybe a day's work, then that developer will make, they will then turn in an artifact. Now, if you're not a developer, this still applies to you. And I'm saying artifact, in our case, when we were having developers work on stuff, it's gonna be code, it's gonna be a link to a working example. Um, but if you don't work in tech, this process can still be leveraged by your organization where you just need to try it and then turn in an artifact of the result of that work. And that can be an incomplete artifact. It just has to be something. Just do something and show the group. And so what we do is we have a developer turn in whatever they've made. And even if this is six hours of effort, just show us what you made and make a video. And so the developer just shows up in the group and they make a video of what they've made. 
and then in many cases provide a link to what they've made and it looks something like this. So we have uh, Discord as our community tool that we use and a developer will walk into the room, they'll drop a, a video describing what they made. So here I have a video from a developer working on uh, the introduction to an experience here. And so here that's, it's, it's, a, it's a one minute and 38 second video as you can see. And um, the shorter the better. These videos do not have to be long, they should be very short. And then having turned in a video, they then post a link to what they made. And here I'll load up the link. And so now I, as the executive director, I'll go through the link of whatever they posted and I'll provide any feedback that makes sense for me to provide uh, when, uh, based upon what they're asking for. So I'll just play through the experience or other developers will open the code and then start to actually play with the experience and provide feedback. And we do that all in the community framework. Now we've been using this method for almost two years and we haven't had a single meeting. Uh, so that is, you know, pretty impressive, I, I think, in, in terms of the traditional process. And, and I hope that illustrates how you don't need to have meetings to actually begin, uh, begin, <laughs> begin moving into a, a, a process and a framework that can be useful. Uh, so here, make a video, turn in an artifact, People respond to that, and then they just do it again. So I'll respond, and then that will just lead to more of the same work. And so um, this process here has gotten us very far and has proven very effective, where all we need to do is make videos, post the content, people in the group provide feedback, and we just keep iterating forward. Now, if you're working on a speech, an essay, a sermon, anything, the artifact can be a Google Doc, a PowerPoint presentation, just make something and share it, people respond, make something and share it, people respond, that's the process. And that process has no waste to it, and it allows for maximum uh, iterations uh, and maximum iteration speed and as much room to maneuver and pivot based upon how quickly we're realizing these ideas are or are not good, and then uh, we don't have to go through all these steps. We can just realize, hey, let's just let's just disqualify this ideas, uh, this idea ourselves, and then go back to the start of the process and begin ideating. So we just do it. <laughs> if you want to simplify our process, just do it, and then do it again, and just share the progress with the community. Uh, I think a vital part of this process uh, that is required to be success, to be successful, excuse me, is asynchronous communication. And so you could do asynchronous communication via text, you could do it via Discord, you could do it via Slack, uh, oop, there we go. You could do it via Slack or Telegram or Element or Session. Uh, I won't even begin to, there's so many other tools that you can do, but if you can just hop into asynchronous communication where people aren't required to be at the same time in the same place they can just share as they work, that's going to be an amazing way that you can find progress, hopefully maybe in the, in the way that we've been able to find progress in our nonprofit. Now, let me qualify this to say uh, we haven't been tremendously successful since we haven't tried to take this to market, so I can't validate the uh, success of our ideas. But I can validate uh, the speed of our ideas and show that as far as our product roadmap, how far we're coming along and how useful this process has been for us, uh, I can definitely share it's been highly effective in that regard. And our specific framework is how do we reimagine the experience of the Bible on the web to be an open authorship platform and 3D interoperable online, offline, AR, VR, spatial responsive, appropriate for us and now and into the future, how do we accomplish that? It's a new challenge that many people haven't attempted to solve. Um, so this process works for us in that regard. I have been rambling for a bit, but I do want to, before I wrap up this video, just walk through how I determine uh, whether the timing is good for a project to be worked on and how I communicate that to our community. And again, the caveat is this works for us and may or may not work for you. Um, but I have a Miro board where I keep the version numbers of, of our organization here, and basically every single month is a new version number. Uh, so we're basically up to uh, August, and then I didn't even put the month numbers here. So here's September, uh, and then October, and then November. Uh, but 
under each of these versions is a, a funny picture that is meaningless. I just pick whatever I think is going to be uh, entertaining to myself. And then uh, the yellow sticky notes here are the category of the project. And then the orange sticky notes are specific tasks that need to be accomplished. And each of these sticky notes can have several subtasks that I leave it up to the developers to figure out how to accomplish. And as tasks become accomplished, I will mark them uh, this dark green color. And here, all the prior dark green sticky notes are things that have been accomplished. And for any one of these accomplished tasks, you can go back and click on the link to that task and see what the tasks were and also how that specific iteration of that project turned out. So the goal is to leave artifacts every step of the way. And this was, uh, for example, an early prototype of turning uh, the Bible into uh, uh, 3D objects that could be played with with the text and so forth using our uh, our API. And in, a, in our case, we needed to figure out, uh, you know, what is a good method to have good performance and yet also uh, be innovative enough to allow for a lot of freedom with playing with new ideas. So this isn't a, a framework that we've stuck with, but you get the idea, hopefully. So going forward, um, I have down below in November uh, task opportunities for those who don't have any prior experience with the current projects or perhaps want to come at this fresh. Uh, down here, these projects are largely um, disconnected from the ongoing projects. And so I'll make a sticky note and say, hey, here's a task that could be done. Here's a video I've recorded describing how that task could be done and what I'm thinking that task could be and open to your feedback and your input, that sort of thing. And I'll post those down here. And so I'll kind of have a mix of uh, defined projects with defined goals and kind of a bounty board of, hey, here's a bunch of stuff that could be done and here's ideas of how it could be accomplished. And then down below are red tasks that are blocked, typically because the tasks up above need to be accomplished first before we begin attempting to accomplish these tasks. It just won't be a good use of our time and energy and effort. Uh, up ahead in the light green, these are future things we prob probably will work on, uh, but until we actually get to the next month and then consolidate what we're going to do and then define it, um, these are all just speculative and we redefine and reset every single month as we go forward to make sure that we're staying uh, on task as much as possible and optimizing our effort to be uh, determining whether or not we have the right timing of our tools, our objectives and our goals and vision and product market fit and all that stuff. How can we iterate forward to determine if it is the right time for our ideas? That's always the, the, the heartbeat behind these goals. So that's our process. Um, at the end of the day, you can break down this into task definition and attempting that task definition with the assumption that we need to figure out if alignment and timing are good as we go. And that's our process. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out. Uh, I wanted just to share this feedback. I do not think our process is a good fit for most organizations. Uh, but if you are trying to do something new or something challenging, I wanted to share this because I don't see many people using this method and perhaps it's helpful to you. If you've got critique, insight, anything you want to share, I would appreciate that. God bless you and thank you.